I want to talk this morning about a, being a wise builder. Jesus talked in the scriptures about you and I being builders. What do you mean a builder? He talked about your life being one that God uses and takes in his hands and molds and shapes. The scripture in, in, in here, the teaching of the gospel, is one where it says that you're either a wise builder or you're not such a wise builder, a foolish builder. You know, we're all building something. What do you mean by that? We're all builders. We're building our life. What kind of life are you building? A good life? You're always going to have struggles. You're always going to have difficulties. Jesus didn't say that this life was going to be free of hardships and stress. That's not what we're talking about this morning. But we're talking about doing it right. Did you know, as Sue said, and maybe we overly state it sometimes, but when you put God first, you're making the right choice. You're building on the rock. You're, you're, you're doing it right. We're talking about how you live your life. We're talking about building your life right. Now, once again, we're all going to have attacks. We're all going to have struggles. We're all going to have things that come against us. But that doesn't dictate how we build our life. My brother, my sister, you're building your life right. You are. By putting God first, by serving the Lord, you're building the best life you could. And I'm here this morning to convince you that you're on the right track. I want to share a scripture in the gospel. Uh, uh, Matthew chapter 7. It talks about the two different contrasts to building. You all know people that live their life uh, different. You don't judge them and you don't, you don't uh, look down on them, but you know the right way. You know that, and I, I guess I'm going to be very simple and very somewhat direct, but honest, you know the right way to live. We all do. It's in our heart. God puts it in our heart. It's part of uh, what you're inherited. It's part of your DNA. But we make the choices what kind of life we're going to live. Jesus said it this way, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine, puts them into practice, is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, what basically, what they're saying is, you're going to have problems. You're going to have things come against you. The rain came down. The streams rose. The winds blew. You're going to have things that come against you. But here's what I like. They beat against the house. Some of you know what it is to have things beat against you. Struggles, addictions, uh, emotions, depression. You have things beat against you. But I'm here to say today that those things aren't going to win out over your life. Why? Because you're a follower of Christ. That's kind of been with me these last few days. Being a follower of Christ is a big thing. But let me continue on. But yet it did not fall. My brother, my sister, you're not going to fall. Meaning, God is with you. God's going to help you. Because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down. The streams rose. The same thing happened to, to both. The winds blew and beat against that house. And it fell with a great crash. We don't use the, the term much anymore. But being a Christian is the right way. Being a follower of Christ 
is the right thing to do. We're not going to be apologetic because I, I believe that we know that. But is it hard to follow Christ sometimes? Yes, it is. Is it difficult? You see, the world is pushing against you. The world is trying to get your attention. The world is trying to get you to follow its ways. God wants you to choose the thing that will help you to give you life. God knew that you would have the winds at your face. God knew that you would have things that hurt you and cause you discouragement. But God designed that he would help you and be with you. A few quick things that I see here. Everyone who hears these words of mine. What do you mean, hears these words of mine? What's it, be a, what's it mean to be a hearer of God? Did you know to being a hearer of God is nothing more than, than someone that hears the, what God is saying? What I'm saying is, throughout the week, you've got to make a decision to build yourself up. You've got to, this atmosphere is good, but you've got to make a decision that you're going to take in the things that strengthen you. you got a lot of things that come against you. Life is hard. Life is difficult. That's why it's important to build yourself up. That's what you're doing today. He says, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man. So the difference that I see of these two individuals, they both hear. It says that, but everyone who hears these words, both of them could hear the word, both of them hear what, but the difference is one is putting them into practice. So if you want a good life, if you want the best life you could have, if you want God to help you, listen, what he's saying is that we need to put them into practice. So forgiveness. We need to forgive those who hurt us. Love when it's hard to love. What I'm saying, my brother, my sister, following Jesus is the right way. Doing it God's way is the right way. Is it hard? Is it difficult? Yes, it is. Do you have things that you struggle with? Yes, you do. But the difference is you're going to make it. God promises to be with you. God promises to help you. Listen. Your, your life isn't going to crash even though you feel like it's out of control and it's crashing. You see, you may stumble. You may trip and things may cause you harm, but it's not going to end in a catastrophe. You're going to make it up. You're going to, you're going to get out of this problem. You're going to make it through this storm you're in. Why? Because you have Jesus in your heart. You got God with you. And what I want to say, God in you is a big thing. God in you, having Jesus in you is, is, is a good thing. You have a choice. You can walk out of God and walk away from God right now. But you know that that's not going to serve you well. You can say, okay, I, I'm going to go the way I'm going. I'm going to I'm cash all in my chips. But what is that going to do for you? My brother, my sister, doing it God's way is the right way. Listen, by you saying yes to the Lord, it, it's the right thing. So the scripture, this is just a simple teaching of Jesus about how to build your life. Once again, I pose the question to you. How are you building your life? Are you a wise builder? Are you one where Jesus talks about being a person that is a wise builder, but I don't feel like a wise builder? Well, it don't go on feelings. Or are you going to be one that maybe is not so wise and Jesus calls him a foolish man? Here's what I want to say. The enemy is trying to cause you to go away from God. The enemy is trying to get your attention and get you so that maybe you don't follow God. 
But here's what you did today. You, you took a step towards God today, and God's taking a step towards you. God is not going to leave you. He's not going to forsake you. When you take a step towards God, he meets you. He helps you. Listen, God's already walking towards you. He's already uh, 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 has a plan, is designing your life. But when you take a deliberate step towards him, you're doing the right thing. So here's what I'm saying. Let's keep making the right choices. Did you know that choices really make up our life? Now that's hard, you know, because sometimes we make the, the wrong choices. But let's practice this week on making good choices for God. What I mean is, if you make a good choice in Christ, you're benefiting yourself. You are. You're, you're opening yourself. You're exposing yourself to the things of God and, and you be, have a way of having a better life. So what I'm saying, my brother, my sister, go with God. Go with God. God, God is the way, the truth, and the life. He that believes in Him. Listen, they're choosing the right thing. I know Christianity today, or I know following God, saying you're a Christian today, seems to be ancient or antique or even be repelled by some. But I'm saying to you, it's still the right thing to do. Following God is still uh, the answer to life's problems. Listen, if you're backed up against the wall, if you have a problem, Go to Jesus with it this week. Listen, if you have something that's coming against you, it's okay to ask God to help you. Sometimes God is waiting for you to, to share your heart with him. You see, when we're talking about praying, you don't have to be uh, some mystic in some way. It don't have to be something that is, is it's drudged out of something that doesn't have meaning. No. A prayer is nothing more than communicating how you're feeling to God. C communicating what's going on in your life to God. Listen, my brother, my sister, God wants to help you this week. God is very capable of helping you right where you're at. I encourage you to, to ask God to help you. I encourage you to go to Him with your problems. Let's be a wise builder. You are going to have headwinds. It's clear here. Gee, this is a teaching of Jesus. You're going to have things that come against you. You're, you're going to have problems. You're going to have the same as the world. The difference for the believer is, and that's you, is who's going to make it? Who's going to survive the storm? At the end of the day, you win if you follow God. And I make no uh, apologies about it. Following God in my, is the right thing to do. So here's what I want to say, my brother, my sister. If you put God first, he'll take you places that you never dreamed were possible. God will help you where you're at. God's ways are the right ways. You know that, or, 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 or you wouldn't be here. But listen, the world so often infringes on what you believe. Everything you listen to, the majority of things on what you watch, goes against what we're talking about. It's not easy to be a Christian in today's world. Even saying the word Christian sometimes has its you know, connotations and its negative thoughts in, in today's society. But we're not taking our marching orders from the world we live in. We're not followers of this world. That Jesus said this world is going to pass away one day. So what tells me it's a fleeting thing. It's something that is, is passing. The Bible teaches us that you're just passing through this world. You're a sojourner. You're not called to be attached to this world. 
You're called to live in the world. You're called to be a blessing. You're called to be fruitful and multiply. And you're called to do your part. But you're not called to be attached to it. You're not called to be one where, where, where this is everything. If this is everything in your life, you're going to be confused. You're going to lack purpose. You know how you get your purpose? is when you serve God. You know how you get your uh, 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 real understanding of who you are? Is as you put yourself in the hands of Christ. Here's what I want to say. You have a problem. You can go to God this week and ask him to help you. You have something you're battling. What's wrong with going to God and helping you? Every one of us battle different things in our life. But God wants to help you right where you're at. So, in conclusion, being a builder, you're building your life. You, you are building what you're doing. You're living out your life every day. What kind of life do you want? Someone once said to me, you know, and they were saying it in a secular term, but it, it was still applicable. They, were, they said to me, they said, you know, you make your life. What I'm saying is every day you're making your life. What I'm just trying to say to you, let's do it God's way. Let's, 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 let's recognize that God's way is the right way. And let's recognize that God is very capable of helping us. Listen, God is very capable of giving you out of that jam. God's very capable of moving someone's heart. God loves you right where you're at. You cannot do anything more to earn the love of God in your life. You cannot. God's paid it all for you. So here's what I want to say. If God be for you, who dare be against you? If God before you, my brother, my sister, that thing you're up against, it's not going to prevail. It's not going to form. It's going to come to pass. I want to encourage you to stay with God. I want to encourage you to not back up and to not somehow surrender your relationship with God to the world. Is it going to be difficult? Is it going to be hard? Yes, it is. But the thing is, when you say yes to God, you're saying yes to the right thing. You're doing the right thing. So in, some, in, in a simple closing, let's do, continue to do the right thing. Let's continue to be wise builders. At the end of the day, you'll look back and you'll say, wow, God's been with me through the storm. He's helped me. When nobody else was there, God was there and he, he brought me through this thing. And you and your God are going to make it through. Father, we love you. We honor you and thank you. Lord Jesus, help us to be disciples of Christ. Help us to be followers of you. Lord, we love you. We thank you. We thank you for the body of Christ. We thank you, Lord that you put a hedge around your people. Be with them this week, we pray. Fight their battles. That one going through a storm, a battle, being under attack. Would you be with them right now, we pray? Would you help them? Lord, would you send your angels to encamp around them, to fight for them, we need the spiritual realm to fight for us, Lord. We need you to help us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Feel free to repeat this. Just a form of confession, a form of saying yes to God. Dear Jesus, I love you. I'm sorry for my mistakes. I'm sorry for doing wrong.